The Manila Electric Company PSE, Mur and Merb, also known as Maralca, Tagalog, Maral K, stylized in its logo as Maralca, is an electric power distribution company in the Philippines. It is Metro Manila's only electric power distributor and holds the power distribution franchise for 22 cities and 89 municipalities, including the whole of the national capital region and the exurbs that form Mega Manila. The name, Maralca is an acronym for Manila Electric Railroad and Light Company, which was the company's original name until 1919. History La Electricista Organized in 1891 and beginning operations in late 1894, La Electricista was the first electric company to provide electricity to Manila towards the close of the Spanish era. La Electricista had built a central power plant on Calle San Sebastian, now Hidalgo Street, in Quiapo, Manila. On January 17, 1895, its streetlights were turned on for the first time and by 1903, it had about 3,000 electric light customers. Founding of the Manila Electric Railroad and Light Company on October 20, 1902, during the American colonial period, the Second Philippine Commission began accepting bids to operate Manila's electric tramway, and by extension, providing electricity to the city and its suburbs. Detroit entrepreneur Charles M. Swift was the sole bidder and on March 24, 1903, was granted the original basic franchise of the Manila Electric Company. The Manila Electric Company acquired La Electricista and the Compañía de las Tranvías de Filipinas, a firm that ran Manila's horse-drawn tramways. Construction on the electric tramway began that same year. In addition to acquiring La Electricista, S. Calle San Sebastian Power Plant, the company built its own steam generating plant on Isla Provisora, later becoming the Manila Thermal Power Plant, which powered the tram system and eventually also the electric service. By 1906, the Manila Electric Company's annual power output capacity was around 8 million kWh. Manila Suburban Railways Company Swift was awarded another franchise in 1906 to operate a 9.8 kilometers (6.1 miles) extension line from Paco to Fort McKinley and Pasig and founded the Manila Suburban Railway to operate this franchise. In 1919, this company merged with the Manila Electric Company. This extension was one of the most profitable of Maralca's lines. By the 1920, Maralca had a 170 strong fleet of streetcars before switching over to buses later in that decade. The company operated 52 miles of trams until World War II. The equipment and tracks of the system was severely damaged during the war and had to be removed. Power generation and distribution By 1915, electricity generation and distribution became the main Maralca. S main income generator, overtaking its public transportation operations in terms of revenue. In 1919, it changed its official name to Manila Electric Company. By 1920, the company's power capacity had grown to 45 million kilowatt hours. In 1925, Maralca was acquired by the utility holding company Associated Gas and Electric or AGECO, reorganized as General Public Utilities Corporation or GPU in 1946, which had begun a massive expansion throughout the United States and the Dominion of Canada. With AGECO's financial backing, Maralca began acquiring a number of existing utility companies in the Philippines, enabling the company to expand beyond Manila. By 1930, Maralca had completed construction of the Philippines' first hydroelectric power plant, the 23 MW Botokan Hydro Station. At the time, this plant was one of the largest engineering projects in Asia and constituted the largest single private capital investment in the Philippines. The additional capacity allowed the company to begin hooking up customers throughout the metropolitan area. To drive demand for more power, Maralca also opened a retail store in order to sell electric home appliances. World War II 
During the Second World War, the Japanese occupying forces forcibly transferred all of Maralka assets and holdings to the Japanese-controlled Taiwan Power Company. By war's end, most of the former Maralka facilities had been destroyed. After the war, Maralka's autobus franchise was sold to Halili Transport. The Lopez Group in 1962, Don Eugenio Lopez Sr. acquired Maralca and finally making it wholly Filipino-owned. During 1962-72, he increased Maralca's power generating capacity five times with the building of additional power stations in the Manila area with two more planned in Rizal Province. In 1972, President Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and issued Presidential Decree 40, which nationalized the country's electric generation and transmission. Lopez's eldest son, Eugenio Jr. Jenny was arrested in order to persuade Don Eugenio to turn over his businesses to the Marcos regime. Jenny was charged for allegedly conspiring to assassinate the president. With his son held hostage, Don Eugenio was forced to give up his holdings in several companies worth several hundred million dollars, but Jenny was not released from prison. Ownership of the company was placed under a shell company called the Maralca Foundation, Inc., controlled by Marcos Associates, in particular, his brother-in-law Benjamin Romaldez, under the newly created state-run National Power Corporation, Napocor. By 1978, all of the Philippines' major power plants were owned and operated by Napocor, including the Metro Manila plants that Maralca had built beforehand in the 1960s. State control for the company, however, began in 1975, given the company's rising debt and financial problems during the decade. By the end of the martial law period in 1981, Maralca expanded even further into Cavite and western parts of Laguna, Rizal and Quezon provinces, as well as parts of southern Bulacan. State control of Maralca lasted until the People Power Revolution in February 1986 toppled the Marcos dictatorship. President Corazon Aquino reverted company ownership to the Lopez Group, without them paying for the state-funded improvements done during martial law. She also enacted an executive order that allowed the company to directly compete with Napocor. Controversies 2008 Legislative Investigation on High Power Rates Maralca is facing a Philippine Legislative Inquiry – Investigation for alleged excessive pricing. The government has considered a plan to take over Maralca, to reduce electricity bills. Maralca and National Transmission Corporation, Transco, blamed each other for the high power rates. Maralca also blames high power generation costs, high transmission costs and government taxes imposed on the electricity sector from power generation to distribution. Government Service Insurance System, GSIS President Winston Garcia, however, blamed Maralca's inefficiency, its bloated bureaucracy, and its sourcing of power from independent power producers IPPs, also owned by the Lopez family, and the need to amend the Electric Power Industry Reform Act EPIRA, of 2001. Oscar Lopez said that if the GSIS would buy the Maralca shares, they must buy in whole cash, while many businessmen also said that taking over Maralca is not the way to reduce electrical price, which depends on the national government and the president. The issue was also seen as a purposeful diversion from the then-ongoing ZTE-NBN scandal and other government issues. A perceived lack of general understanding regarding the issue of system loss, inherent in the business of utilities prompted Maralca's former holding company, First Philippine Holdings, to issue advertisements explaining systems loss. Syndicated Estafa and Bribery Case the Department of Justice Philippines filed syndicated fraud charges against Maralca in its August 22, 2008 31-page resolution, filed with the Pasig Regional Trial Court. The May 29 National Association of Electricity Consumers for Reform NASCOR, complaint accused Maralca of illegally declaring as income 889 million pesos in consumers' money, which represents interest from meter and bill deposits consumers had been paying since 1995. 
No bail was recommended for all the accused, 2006 officers of Maralca, to wit Maralca Chairman and CEO Manuel Lopez, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer Daniel Tagaza, First Vice Resident and Treasurer Rafael Andrada, Vice President and Corporate Auditor and Compliance Officer Helen de Guzman, Vice President and Assistant Controller Antonio Valera, and Senior Assistant Vice President and Assistant Treasurer Manolo Fernando, 2006 Maralca Directors Arthur Defensor Jr. Gregory Domingo, Octavio Victor Espiritu, Christian Monsad, Federico Puno, Washington Sisip, Emilio Vikins, Francisco Vire, and former Prime Minister Cesar Verrata. Nays Corps S. Complaint accusing Moralca of illegally declaring as income 889 million pesos in consumers' money, which represents interest from meter and bill deposits consumers had been paying since 1995, was immediately refuted by the accused company as the alleged 889 million pesos only stemmed from a generally accepted accounting principle of reversing Moralca. S. Earlier provision for meter deposit interests which, earlier set at 10% per annum was deemed too high and was set to the recommended 6%. Moralka also questioned how a syndicated Estafa case can arise when it has already announced and committed that it will be refunding to customers who paid meter deposit principals plus interest months ahead of the ERC prescribed schedule and has allocated enough funds for the said refund. Moralka is also involved in the GSIS Moralka bribery case. Dismissal of syndicated Estafa case On October 6, 2008, the Pasig City Regional Trial Court Branch 71 dismissed the syndicated Estafa case filed against the Moralka Board of Directors, for the prosecution failed to establish all the elements of syndicated Estafa. Presiding Judge Franco Falcon, pointed out in the ruling that the board is not the kind described by the law as being formed to perpetrate an illegal act for the board of directors were elected by stockholders. The court explained, therefore, the accused can never be charged of taking part in the commission of syndicated estafa not only because they are not part of a syndicate as contemplated by law in PD 1689, but more so, because there was absolutely no estafa committed. According to Philippine law, to constitute syndicated estafa, the subject money or property must be received by the offenders. The money represents the accrued interests on the bill and meter deposits, which were paid by Moralka customers, not directly to the board, but to the various Moralka business centers where the customers transacted. Moralka expressed elation over the dismissal. Service area Moralka serves Metro Manila, where it is the sole electricity distributor, as well as some nearby provinces, like Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon. Bulacan, Cavite, and Rizal are solely served by Moralka, but on some provinces, it only serves some parts, like in Laguna, Batangas, and Quezon, where most or some areas are served by electric cooperatives. In Laguna and Quezon, most part of those provinces are served by the company, but other areas, mostly rural municipalities, are served by electric cooperatives. In Batangas, only Santo Tomas, the first Philippine industrial park and first industrial township says both in Tanawan, Batangas City, San Pascual and parts of Laurel, barangays of Niugan and Dayap Itaz, and Calaca, parts of Barangay Cahil, which facing Route 410 are served by Maralca, and the rest of the province are franchise areas of electric cooperatives. Ownership Beacon Electric Asset Holdings, Inc., 34.96% JG Summit Holdings, Inc., 29.56% Metro Pacific Investments Corporation, 10.5% First Philippine Holdings Corporation, 3.94% First Philippine Utilities Corporation, 0.01% Others public stock, 21.03%. Sports teams Maralca Ready Kilowatts, MICAA basketball team, Maralca Bolts, PBA team, FC Maralca Manila, Philippines Football League team. Maralca Power Spikers, Shakey's B-League and Philippine Super Liga team. 
References